Hey everyone, uh, thanks for being here, and sorry about the few little minutes delay. My computer just crashed, and that's not a good thing when that happens, so we never want that. Um, so, yeah, let me just get my pop-up window ready, and we're ready to go. Okay, well thanks for being here, and some of the, all the familiar names of everyone, thank you so much. So today I want to talk about doing five turnarounds that are super important. Um, so first thing, oh, first things first, uh, thank you for being here, like I said, Phil Mingan for being the moderator, and uh, all my True Fire courses are on sale, I believe, I think I have a code. If not, I will get you guys a code, so live 25, and that's 25% off of all my True Fire courses only, only through my True Fire page, and, no, through my website. And a quick announcement, well, I'm looking forward to this, this is going to be on this page here, on my YouTube page, and on the True Fire site. We're doing something together. I'm doing like a quick tone tip, a do-it-yourself do uh, tone tip. So I'm going to go through pedals like my Univibe and fuzz pedal and how to quickly dial in those sounds. Um, they're not going to be really long tutorials. And I'm going to do a few little chains. Uh, you want to do a quick Gilmore, this is what you do. You want to get a quick, like here's my road gig, like my road board, and I'll talk about those sort of things. Really quick stuff, not too deep where we get uh, deep into the minutia of the stuff, just Pedals that I think you would probably be interested in and what order those pedals go in. Okay, so here we go. Um, turnarounds. Uh, I've given you five today, <coughs> excuse me, and they're all from my courses. So you have the tab uh, and a link below, which should be working. So the first one, I tried to play all of them. I didn't play one of them. So let's start with that one. Actually, let's play, I don't, 
remember what order I put them in. So you guys can look. They just have numbers on them. So the first one, let's check out the classic Robert Johnson sort of turnaround. Let me tune up. Let me do that first. New strings. I forgot they're like brand new. There we go. Okay. So the first one is really classic and you should totally get this one together. So the first thing I'm going to do, well, first of all, what a turnaround is, it comes at the last two bars of a blues, right? So if I'm playing through this, I'm going to take from the five chord there. And one, and two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Now, what is really, when I first started getting into a turnaround, when I first learned one, I never started at the right point. So this lick, let's learn this together. So it's on the tab. This is that Robert Johnson style turnaround. That's where I first heard it. And it's in LaGrange. Right? It's the classic turnaround. I'll show you how you can move it around as well. Okay, so it's low A. Then I have my G and A. I'm gonna move this down chromatically, F sharp, A. F, A, E, then to my E7 chord. But it starts on beat two, so it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's super important. If you start at one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that it's gonna mess you up. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, All right? So that's the cool thing right there. One, two, three, four, one. That's not so much a cool thing. That's what you got to do. Lowering my chair a bit. Okay, so what we can do is put a triplet on the top. So I look at that as two turnarounds, or we can do an eighth note. Here's my five chord. So I can do straight. One, two, three, four. Or. Or I can put the triplet on the top. All right, now the trick here in, that I like to use is hybrid picking. Either I use my picking fingers which is hybrid picking, or I'll just use my fingers depending on what I'm playing. But I'm doing a rock tune. I'm always playing with a pick. So I'm going to put my pick between, hold it normally, and I'm going to use my middle finger to get the high note. So, so you can see that right there. All right, so it's, what's really nice about this turnaround is uh, it's the classic one. You want to work on this one first. So you could say, hey, Jeff, how about I want to do it in a different key than A? And I would say, okay, let me, sorry, guys. I, there we go. There we go. Get my chair right. All right, so I want to do it in a different key than A. Here's the beauty of this turnaround. Your, your pinky is your root, right? So if I want to do it, say, in G, If I start it with my pinky, there is my root, and the same motion is always going to work the same. You just have to find your bass note. So doing it in G, I can skip my bass note. If a bass player is with me, they might go, and you can just go. All right, so there's my G. So, boom. And that's just like Jesus Just Left Chicago by ZZ Top. So that one, I'm just bouncing between the two. Okay, now you go, oh, dang, I've done my turnaround. What's my five chord, right? You whip out the, the turnaround, and you're like, oh, no. The note you end on is your five chord. So watch. My F, E, E flat, D, D7, back to the G. So if I look at my one in A, 
here's my E, here's my turnaround, right? So, we're on the five chord, not A. All right, so let's try it in a different spot. Let's try a turnaround in C. So what's the rule, guys? Pinky is on your root. Where's my five chord? What's that note? G. So, oop. Now, like I said, I might leave out that bass note, let the bass player grab it, because, I mean, I can do it, but there's no real need to. Bong. Right? So, E. What's my bass note? What's my five chord? I end on a B note. There's my five chord. Pretty, pretty cool, right? Um, but there's more. Okay, so you may say, Jeff, that's only on the high string. What I like about this turnaround, I didn't know this for years, because I just didn't, is that you can take the same exact turnaround, bring it towards your face, bring it lower on the strings, fingering-wise, and it works the same way. What do you mean? Okay, well, let's say I want to do two and around in D. So, if I had a low D, that would be awesome. Let's a little attitude the, the trem, but watch. Yeah, sorry, I messed that up. Live TV. What's my five chord? A. So remember this move, right? So it's this on G. Now I'm gonna just bring it up towards the ceiling. Here it is on D. Right? Let's move that one elsewhere. I want to do that one in F sharp. You're playing a blues in F sharp. Not that you want to play a blues in F sharp, because you can't use your open strings so much. Well, here's my F sharp. That's my five chord. What did I end on? C sharp seven. Right? So it's really useful because, say, if you're playing around and you want to get a turnaround, here, here's one in A. Well, it's this. But since guitar players, a lot of times, we're just stupid. <laughs> we learn something here, and we think that's the only place we can do it. Uh, trust me, I've done that for years. And yeah, there it is. That's it. I can only play that there, but nope. All right. So once again, wherever that pinky starts, um, on the E string or the B string, that's the turnaround. Nope, doesn't work there. So the same shape. I love these things on the guitar because, you know, sometimes you're playing a gig and you're like, oh man, I want to throw in a turnaround. And then you have two. So now you have one in every key. If you listen to those old Robert Johnson recordings, which are great and I highly recommend you do, um, a lot of times he starts off a lot of those tunes with the same turnaround. And no matter, regardless of the feel of the tune. So you do like, uh, like suddenly the tempo changes, the feel changes, but he's always starting off with one of those turnarounds. So that's a great way to play them. All right, so that's the Robert Johnson one. Once again, your five chord is the note you end on. So if I'm doing a B turnaround, my five chord is F sharp. Don't forget the actual motion, the downward motion of the turnaround starts on beat two. Okay, so the first one I have is this. Standard kind of, you know. So this move is really pretty cool. You probably know this one. So here, I'm just taking what is essentially an E7 chord. I have B, E, and open E string. 
sorry, B, D in the open E string. I'm gonna slide these down. Then I do a little C9 to, to B9 to E7. Now I can phrase this any other way I want. A little hybrid picking. Right, so I can get that. You want to work that one out a lot. What I like about this one too is we can expand upon it a little bit. So this isn't in the tab, but this one's for free. <laughs> so here's a, it's E7. <coughs> You're playing E7. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I can put that G sharp in the top, and that's E7, right? So if you're not, if you're a little unclear, that's like the first D7 chord you learned. Bring it up a whole step. It's E7. So watch. Right there, you go. E7. Now watch. So. Right, so that's a nice one. Uh, another interesting thing about turnarounds is we just did them descending, right? They can also be played ascending. All right, so I can do. Right? So any turnaround that you play descending, you can also play ascending. So how cool is that? So double your money. Double your money on the turnarounds. All right, so <coughs> um, if you look through the pages, I, I'm trying to, I don't remember what numbers I put them on. Now this is a cool one up here. I'm going to just, I'm staying in A. end, but here's the move. So I'm doing... I just did it, you know, ended it in the tab, but so... So you don't want to end it. Now that's obviously a turnaround I'd more or less play with a band because it's not really chordal. It's a single note turnaround. So I wouldn't necessarily um, play that just by myself. I think it's a little empty sounding, but hey, sounds great in a band. Now the next one, um, I, I wrote it up, but I want to show you it a little differently. And I really like this one a lot. So I, I did a... And I did this. Now, what I do? Eh. <laughs> All right, that's kind of cool. Let's check that same little turnaround out down here. So I'm to go for my five chord, the A turnaround. Now, 
Now, what I dig about this one, and this is on my 50 eclectic blues licks course, is I'm doing what we call contrapuntal motion. I have one line going up and one line going down. So the line goes, and this one goes. I like that one because, you know, it's different. It's not this. Nothing wrong with that, but to throw in. So in the lick, I just do it up here. Just took the same lick in a different octave. It's more difficult to play there. Fingering-wise, that's a little funky. It's funky anyway, so the way I'm fingering that one is one and four. I just slide the pinky back. I guess you could do that. Whatever works for you. I'm pretty okay with my pinky. If you're not, maybe you could do that. So either way, um, you want to check that one out. Move it to any other key, of course. You want to think about what your starting note is, right? So here it is in A. So it just starts in your flat seven and your third, so if I wanted to bring it to B. And what's really cool is your five chord, what is your five chord? It's the last note on your first finger. Same thing again. It's the same move, guys. That with that finger, and except this other one's going up. Right, then. Makes sense. All right, I'll, I'll answer all these questions in a minute. I'm sure there's questions. And here is my favorite turnaround of all time. Well, not my favorite, but it's the super cool one. Every time I play it, people are like, what is that? And it's in my, I actually probably put it in the future fire courses because it's just one I think you should know. Uh, this tab is from my 50 Blues Licks, the course that started it all 14 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> True fire. When you watch it now, I'm like, oh my god. I'm like, I look significantly older. <laughs> All right, so. So I love this one because you've got the contrapuntal motion. We play it slow. So let's break that down. My low note. Same as that turnaround we learned earlier. Well, that's that same thing we've been hearing. So we're really putting all these things together. So if I just do the top note and the bottom note. I go to E augmented. I highly recommend you learn that. That's really cool. And what I say before, that's another direction to the same exact thing. So as we continue this one, I'm, I'm hybrid picking this one to get all the notes. I actually sometimes just put my pick between my first finger and my second finger. So I have my A chord. And what I have here is an A7 with C sharp in the bass. So I have C-sharp, A, and the F, sorry, C-sharp, A, and the G. The A stays the same, so I'm getting the contrapuntal motion. The, the F-sharp moves down, the G moves down to F-sharp. C-sharp moves up to D. So I've got, and then same idea. So I have my, this is moving up. And so once again, that same line, but with an A in all of it. Then you can go to this if I want. You can just grab an A chord. Sometimes that's easiest because you're not trying to fumble with some weird fingering. Then it's the E augmented. Oh, darling. All right, first chord is Stormy Monday as well. I am still out of tune.
brand new strings. Just got the guitar. I'll talk about that in a minute, what, what just happened with the guitar. Okay, so. And it fits anywhere. So I can break it up like that. Right? So all sorts of cool stuff. So there are five essential turnarounds that you must know. Um, what I... There's a few ways you can practice turnarounds. First thing I would do is just maybe loop them or just practice the last four bars of a blues. Because sometimes, you know, you're playing to the 12 bars and then you get to that turnaround and you're like, ah, I missed it. And then, oh, I missed it. And so just, just practice the turnaround. Um, work on the hybrid picking. Definitely try different keys and different feels. And then sometimes some of them are just not going to really work that great or stylistically. They're not going to really kind of work so well. All right, so one final thing before I start taking some questions is um, when I look at the turnaround, I... I want to make sure, I, well, I'm just turning my vocal mic down, see it's clipping a little bit. Um, what's going on in a turnaround besides, you know, or really kind of what we're hearing is a 16251. Now, was Robert Johnson thinking about a 16251? No, but it's this. Same kind of sound you're getting in there, like. So I'm kind of hearing it as a one, six, two, five, one. See what I mean? So you're playing something traditional like that, and you go, well, that's cool, right? So there you go. Five blues turnarounds you must, you must, must know. All right, so let's see. We've got some questions. Thanks for already being here. Um, I have two pop-up windows. Okay, cool. Um, hold on a sec. Sorry, guys. Important text that needed to be answered. Sorry. I know. These things happen. Family stuff. It's all good. Okay. Here we go. Um, uh, can I show you a few outside jazzy turnarounds? Um, no. <laughs> I'll save that for another lesson. We'll talk about the one, six, two, five, ones. And those are jazzy. I want to stick to just the basic one right now. And I, I promise Brad, uh, Roman, we, we will do outside uh, jazzy turnarounds. But those are one, six, two, five, ones. I want to get, I want to do a whole thing in there because there's so much stuff to talk about with that. So thank you though. Um, all right. Uh, when you play, this is from Andre Ruster. Would you play, would you play turnarounds or not most of the end of a sequence or just once in a while to spice things up? Okay, it's a really good question. Um, he's asking, do I play turnarounds all the time or just some of the time? Um, some of the time. If you, in my mind, if you play them every time, it can be, oh boy, here comes the turnaround. So sometimes I might go through the blues, right? And then, or I allude to one. Change keys. We'll go back to A. Might do a simple one.
a turnaround, right? Because now we need one. Yeah, because if I did that turnaround every single time, it would be really tedious. So that's a good question. That's why also sometimes variations on the turnarounds are really nice. But yeah, I will not do a turnaround every single time. And uh, I'm, I'm sure if you've been to blues jams and the guys do a turnaround every single time, y yeah, it gets to be like, oh boy, here it comes. So, all right. Um, Graham Ross. Hey, Graham, how you doing, man? Scotland in the house. How many times do you go uh, around the progression till you throw one in? Um, I also, you like the, the gold guitar. I like the gold guitar, too. I'm trying to get, you see, the light's got to get on better. I didn't, didn't line up the light right today. Doing some other shooting, so I had to move some lights around and putting tape on the ground. And, all right. So, um, I don't know. It, it's whatever feels right. You know what I mean? If I, I, I might do one off the top. Um, it's just whatever, whatever feels good. Uh, I don't want to do too many of them. I don't want to repeat the same one too much. That's another big thing, as I was just saying before. You do want to vary the turnarounds. And sometimes you don't want to play a turnaround. Because if you play the same one every single time, it's like, okay, here it comes again. And uh, I find myself dreading them when you do that. Okay. Um, Robert Johnson's moving on the five chord in Kind Hearted Woman. Yeah, yeah. Is a... Uh, is killer. I love that thing just Jason's talking about. One thing I love that he does in Kind Hearted Woman just on the top. This is a diminished, a, a diminished. Okay. All I'm doing here is playing A7. Like that. I'm going to bring it down half step. Pinky on, the third, pinky on the top to get the A diminished. There you go. All right. See, I get distracted so easily. Um... Okay, uh, this is from Alan Kemple. Uh, maybe late. <laughs> you maybe already did it. Uh, can you play a slow? Um, can I only sh uh, show the turnarounds in full context of a 12 bar, let's say, from bars 9, 10? Yeah. Um, yeah, let me show you one more. I'm going to do the, the, what I call the super turnaround. Okay? So if I'm playing a slow blues, I love that one in a slow blues. Knob. Gotta get these depths, knobs yet. So there it is in the context of a slow 12 bar. Um, this is from Sonia. Do you use turnarounds to change the key or between songs? Uh, I guess you could. I don't necessarily. You know, in the blues, if you suddenly did a turnaround in a different key, you could work it in, but it's got to be pretty jarring, and it might be the effect that you want. But um, I don't really use it to change keys. I, I, it's worth a shot. Maybe it's something you can investigate. I've, I've not really done it consciously. Um, 
I don't know why. I don't have a good answer for that. But I guess you could work that out. It could be your five chord at the end could be the five of the five. So you could do like, uh, you know, let's try it. So. You would, yeah, you can make it from the to the four, like go to like a bridge. You could do a turn around going to a bridge. That would work. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yes, you can do that. <laughs> How's that for an answer? Um, do you plan on having more True Fire stuff in the style of Billy Gibbons, focused on the Billy Gibbons course? This is from uh, Kanisha Vinod. Um, Krishna Vinod, excuse me, I'm trying to read from here. Uh, no, uh, no more Billy Gibbons. No, uh, I was really overjoyed to do that. That was like a labor of love because I just love him so much. I think there's a lot of information I covered. I wouldn't know what else to say about him other than go figure out the stuff off his records. Off of that course, I just really wanted to get people to get some of the basic things together plenty of tutorials of his online, but after you look, look at the stuff that I do, I would absolutely just start learning the records, you know, um, first six, first three for me, four. Yeah. Trace Ombres for sure. Uh, I really like Fandango a lot. I love, um, ZZ Top's first record. So much good stuff on that. DeGuelo. Uh, yeah. The first six. But no, I don't think I'm going to do any more in the style of courses. I'm doing a course with Brett Papa coming up where I'm focusing in on my influences. And I'm talking about Michael Schenker, who I just freaking love, and um, Eric Clapton, and uh, Jeff Beck, and David Gilmore. And it's not so much how to sound like them, because I don't know. I, I don't know if I sound like them. Um, but what I've learned from them and how they've influenced my guitar playing. So that's going to be coming out in August. So I hope to have that out in August. Um, uh, okay. Is there any relation between dissonant chords with, any relation between dissonant chords with the diminished chords? Oh, sorry, there's no relation between dissonant chords with diminished chords? I'm not sure what you, what you mean. Um, what's interesting, at this point in my life, I don't hear a diminished chord as sounding dissonant. It's just so common to me, you know, like, you know, it's so old, like, in the, like, that, uh... Right, you know what I mean? It's that kind of thing. One nice way to think about a diminished chord, say like a passing four diminished chord in a blues. I'll show you this. Right, straight, just playing straight. My four chord, sharp four diminished. So all that is, if you think about it, it's just a D7 chord with a sharp root. So I don't hear that that is that diminished sounding. All right, yes. Um, yeah, Graham, yeah, Paul Chapman died uh, from UFO. Ooh, that was a bummer. It's a, a totally a bummer. Um, okay. Uh, what about an ending? Can you... Sorry, I already read that question before. Okay, cool. So let me just talk about some stuff if you guys think about some more questions. Um, the, the thing that... Oh. <laughs> uh, the turnarounds, you know, even the ones that you play in a rhythm guitar, I can play as a lead thing. You know, I can use all these ideas uh, as a lead guitar player. Right, they don't just have to be played as, as a rhythm guitar thing. You know what I mean? So I mean, like, so I can just throw that in there. All right, so um, turnarounds, uh, that's it. So what, what I want to talk about, just, I just got this back, the fine folks at PRS uh, and my good friend David Grissom have been uh, messing around a little bit. And I, they sent me one of the, some of those, the, the TCI tuned capacitance inductance stuff, or just to do pickups. Um, and yeah, they sound really great. So yeah, 
I can't get used to these volume knobs yet, though. <laughs> They're backwards. <laughs> sounds, sounds really great. Okay. All right, so let me just, just kind of noodle in there. Just mess and watch. That's a cool thing just to play on an A chord. Watch. It's your turn around, watch. Now I'm going to do turn around. Watch again. See what I did? So I can use the turnaround as a way to spice up the chord. So that's pretty cool too. So there's another use for a turnaround. And you gotta work on that one. It doesn't always work perfectly, or if you screw it up like I did, it's definitely not gonna work. But it gives you some extra motion to play on the chord instead of just playing the chord. So once again, like you know. So that's a, that's a cool thing to work on. A little tricky. You got to practice that, like everything. But I'm using the turnaround as just a way to add some more motion to the chord. Uh, Zia Martin, is there a great, there's a great turnaround Sweet Home Chicago played by Matt Murphy and the Blues Brothers Band. There is. Are you talking about the one on the intro? <sighs> yeah. Oof. It's in one of my courses. It's in my Chicago Blues course. I talk about that very turnaround from the, the Blues Brothers, Sweet Home Chicago, because I love that movie. It's one of my favorite movies. And uh, I, I taught it in my Chicago Blues course, and I'm forgetting what that turnaround is. You know, but um, man. Yeah, yeah. It's in my Chicago Blues course uh, at True Fire when I do uh, Sweet Home Chicago. Sweet Home Chicago, it's going to Sweet Home Alabama. Sweet Home Chicago. Um, okay, cool. Um, any other questions? Kind of light on the question today. A lot of people here, though. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So, um, someone who, uh, someone's uh, texting me, Phil. Okay, I don't know. Are you, are you texting me information, Phil, or is it something? Tune capacitance and inductance pickups. There we go. Yeah, thank you, Phil. All right, I didn't know the name. I kept I'm forgetting that, but super cool. Um, all right, so, yeah. All right, so turnarounds. There's five really good turnarounds for you to work on. Um, when I'm playing, you, you want to just isolate them. Like I said before, just keep on working on this. You know, just let, Jesus just left Chicago with this. slides it in. So there's all sorts of ways. And like I said at the beginning, remember the pinky is the guy. There it is in G. There it is in A. There it is in E. There it is in F sharp. So you really want to get that together. Wherever you end on that first finger.
that's where your five chord is. Okay, cool. Um, all right, James Spazano, uh, how about single note turnarounds, yay or nay, or ya yeah or na? Um, yeah, sure. Like I, what's cool about the turnarounds I just showed you, you can use them as single note turnarounds. Like I said, that one, you know, this, the big, or there's an easy one. So it's going to go. Yeah, that's a good one. And then the, one of the ones that I gave you. Right? Oh, okay, Z, you're saying Z to, and not, and not in the intro in the solo. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know that one, but I know what you're talking about. Um, it's pretty good. Are you using devices like Jason Lachlan was talking about when you change things up mid shuffle? Um, devices. Um, No, not that I look at as devices. I just look at um, having gone through, uh, having learned a lot of things, you know what I mean? Just learning other people's stuff. Uh, I just try to expand upon the idea, excuse me, and I try not to do the same thing too much. Now, there's certain things that you, if you're in James Brown's band, you need to go like... <laughs> Like, that's your gig all night. And if you do anything other than that, um, he would have fired you. And it just doesn't sound as good, right? It doesn't, it's the, the funky little line. So if I'm playing a shuffle or a thing or a blues, for me, I feel like there's, you got two choruses on one idea, right? Um, depending on how long the song is going to be. But so see if I'm going to, I'll just play like. Sometimes I hate playing shuffles, but they're easy. I did it again, but imagine it. change register quite a bit and sometimes change the feel but I don't want to change the feel so dramatically that you're like what is going on you have to be careful if you are playing with another guitar player which I hope I get to do soon again <laughs> it'd be nice to play a gig um, you just have to be listening to what the other guy is playing um, because that will that really should dictate what it is you're playing because if you're going nuts and they're playing it's gonna sound terrible um, but I, I generally try to work with register and listen to what, they're list, what the, the singer is doing or the band's doing. What I mean by register is I might be down here for a while and then I move up here to the middle spot to kind of build up the, the uh, excitement and then I might move up higher to build up the excitement even more and then bring it back down. Um, but it all comes down to listening. So I, I'm definitely going to work my way through a, a tune. So if you think about like a system or a device, um, I, I, I kind of know what you're asking. Th that's one sort of like roadmap that I like to use and just knowing my dominant seventh chord inversions and knowing different turnarounds because I did this then I did that I could have done so it all kind of reads sort of the same way but a little bit different so that makes it much more interesting all right a few more questions looks like um this is a great lesson thank you very much hey Eamon Eamon excuse me I pronounced that wrong Tom Peterson, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, these pickups are really great. So I want to say hi to everyone. Do some shout outs. Graham Ross, thank you, everybody. All the same people. Krishna, uh, Tarsicio, uh, Ron. Man, everybody's so great. Thank you for everybody. I see um, Matt Gibson. Oh, man, good to see you, man. Uh, Grandpa Bob. I love all the names of people. Bevy, Bebe's here. Jason Lachlan, Roman Legions, Brove, yeah, Jason Carter, 
please, five watt world. Hey, uh, oh yeah, everybody, right? Five watt world. Um, let's talk about that for just a second, right? Keith, Keith Williams, Keith's latest video, which was, uh, all right, sorry, Kelly's here. Everybody doing the shout outs. Thank you, everyone. Um, so Keith's latest video, which is fun, he, he, he featured some of my music on it and, um, uh, thank you, Keith. And also, uh, quoted something, uh, uh, quoted me on switching over to a Les Paul from a Strat for a while. And, um, it's a really cool video. You guys should watch it. It, it, as he approaches it the same way I do, it's kind of an uptown thing of like playing the same rig for 30 days or 60 days. So you're not changing guitars up. And yeah, that's a bit, that is a first world problem to have a number of guitars and amps to, to mess around with. But what I find, um, I have like three main guitars. I mean, they're really good. I, I admit I've got, you know, let's just, I'll take a poke at them. So this, I really love this guitar. They sent me this, which is so cool about this guitar is, um, I didn't know I didn't have this, if that makes sense. So this has actually moved quite up really high, which I'm really psyched about because it's got a different vibe than my other guitars. So, um, this number, um, certainly, uh, my Strat is, yeah, speaks for itself. So this, and um, the the Les Paul, which is off camera. Hold on. And and a Les Paul. Um, and maybe a telly, but you know, I'm not, not really a telly guy. Like say like, uh, like my friend Jason who's online who, I mean, he plays other guitars, but I guess at the end of the day, um, I'm a Strat guy, I think. But, um, those are sort of the main ones that, you know, I, I feel like, but if somebody said to me, Hey, you got to have one guitar and then that's it. It's probably going to be a Stratocaster for me. I just feel most comfortable with them. Well, I just grew up playing Jacksons and Charvels, which are strats, you know, modified strats. So that was where I was kind of lived, um, lived the most and feel like that would be the, the one thing. But it was really kind of fun and instructive to just put it aside the strat for a while and totally put, I actually put it away in a case and all I played was a Les Paul for a while because you know, when I was playing with Robin, I talked about this before, you know, he was saying, yeah, you play great on a strat, but I hear you play a lot of strat stuff. And I know what he meant. I got, you know, very into, you know, I could sound Hendrixy or Trowery at the time with the, with the, uh, Univibes and things like that. So, um, it was really nice to play a Les Paul straight for, for ages, you know? Um, and what really was nice about that was, uh, it changed the way I play a Stratocaster, which I really was really happy about. Okay. So no semi hollows. No, I don't, I had some, there's two, there's a few reasons. One, um, I sold, I had a few different ones throughout time and I ended up selling them for other guitars as you do. Um, and I sold, I sold to get th that my old Strat, I sold a ton of things to get that guitar. Um, there's one really practical thing about um, 335s for me. I love them, but they're kind of big. And I try to be pretty pragmatic about what it is that I play. And I had that Collings for a while and I really love that guitar. It's a little smaller. I just think on gigs, I'm, I'm just a solid body guy, you know, in terms of how I play the guitar physically. The, I just have played them for so long. I just like the way they sound. Um, so playing a hollow body, semi hollow body all night was not my favorite thing. Now, maybe I didn't give it enough time. I toured with Robin with one and it, 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 I liked it. I didn't love it, even though the guitar was great. Uh, another really totally ridiculous thing is they're big. So the reality of, of touring around and carrying any kind of 335, excuse me, forget it. The, the flight case on a 335 is huge. Like it's huge, stupid big. And then they sometimes charge you overage on those. I have some friends who are 335 players and they just finally after a while, especially how rough airlines have gotten, they were just like, I'm out, I'm done with the 335. And they would switch to a, a solid body. Um, also, you know, the gig bags for a 335. So you're walking around with that in New York and then you got your pedal board. It was just becoming kind of, it wasn't, it wasn't my thing. So I love them. P90s, well, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, I love P90s. Uh, absolutely love P90s. Um, you, know, you know, they can just be a little noisy at times, which is, I know, part of it. But in certain gigs, that can be quite difficult, you know. But um, yeah, I love them all. I love tellies. I love strats. Uh, the only guitars I've never really connected with for me as a player has been like uh, Gretsch's, like big guitars like that. I, I find them very difficult to play because they're not set up for the way I grew up. So you may ask, well, what is that? Um, big frets, big tall frets. These are 6100s. I usually use 6105s. I'm not going to put 6100s on a vintage Strat. Y you, know, you just don't, you don't do that <laughs> on that guitar. It's got this, the, the slab, I mean, the um, linear board. You know, but with my Tuttles, which are great, you know, 6105s or 6100s. On my Les Paul, 6105s. On this, this comes stock with 6100s, and I'm really digging that. So bigger frets. I really like big frets. That's a big thing for me. Um, I cannot play vintage frets at all. Um, people ask me, did I refret my vintage guitar? Yes, I refretted my vintage guitar because I've got to play it. So um, that's super important to me, too, that I've got to be able to play. Um, so the things, to answer some of the questions, a lot of these things become very practical. Uh, from a musician's point of view, as any of my musician friends uh, can attest to. Um, gigging. Um, actively, you know, I don't have a big pedal board. Who's, who's gonna, I'm not going to move that. I don't really love heavy guitars because you walk around New York, I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is terrible. Um, so if I'm, if I'm doing rehearsals, I'll bring, you know, this, this telly that Michael Tuttle made for me. Um, it's a great guitar, and it looks totally awesome. And it's super lightweight. It's like s under seven pounds, or just at seven pounds. And that was like, make me a super light Telecaster. So when I go to rehearsals, I just have this on my back, and I'm totally happy. It sounds amazing. And um, yeah. And, and also, there's no damage. It's not like a, when you're carrying around, toting around a Les Paul. Um, you know, that can be, it can be it. So back to Keith's thing. Um, I put away everything and played a Les Paul for like a month and a half. And I really loved it because then I discovered what a Les Paul is really about. And I think it's important. So when I, I know I have got a number of guitars. Um, it's what I do for a living. It's my job. You know, I need them for recording. But if you notice, I don't have a ton. I mean, that's all relative. I have the ones that I need. I need a Tele. I need a Strat. I need a Les Paul. I need a P90 guitar for all the kind of work I've done. And that's kind of it. My work doesn't call for me to have a big, a big jazz box. I'd love to have one, but I'd like a pony as well, you know? So, all right. I could talk about this stuff forever. Um, I'm really glad you guys are loving the stream. You know, I, I want to take a moment to, uh, to thank everyone. You know, we got a lot of people online getting tons of emails and all the comments. You know, I really appreciate this. It's, it's great. I love talking about this stuff. I feel like we've got a nice little community going. Um, I love bringing my friends on to, uh, to talk about guitar, you know, guitar stuff. People who really want to hang out and, and, and talk about music and, and, and reality of what the business is about and all that. So I've just been overjoyed and so thankful and grateful to everybody who's hit the tip jar and all those kind of things. And uh, yeah, it means, it means a ton to me. So I'm going to keep on doing this. People ask me, like, are you going to stop doing this if the corona thing moves on? Which it is definitely not <laughs> at this point, as we can see. No. Uh, I'm going to keep on doing this. What I may do, I'm just going to throw, throw this out there right now. Um, the Saturday morning thing, I'm, first of all, I'm not doing one this Saturday morning because it's going to be the 4th of July weekend. And then, so I'm not doing that just because I don't think anybody's going to be around. Um, the other, so the following weekend is going to be my good friend Shane Terrio, who's freaking great, and he plays with Hall and & Oates, and um, uh, he's, he's great, and he's you've got great stories, and cool, great sense of humor. That's going to be a ton of fun. We've been friends for quite some time, and uh, what a great guitar player. So uh, Shane Terrio is going to be on in, in two weeks. Um, also, on top of that, um, the Saturday morning things, I, I may or may not go to a pre-recorded thing, just because some of the sound issues that we've encountered. So I might just do a pre-recorded thing, keep the interview things going, and then release them and maybe do what they call like a live um, uh, a launch, right? So I can be there and answer questions during it. Um, what do you guys think? I'd love to get your input on that, okay? Just let me know. Would you 
do you really want to keep the Saturday morning live with the potential occasional uh, audio issues that I can't control or um, just keep it uh, or, or do you mind if it's pre-recorded, which we can make it have better audio. Just you guys let me know what you think. So I see Miguel is online. Everybody, thank you very much. And yeah, once again, um, thanks to Phil Mingan, who is my moderator, who I definitely, that's not giving the Oscars, who I couldn't, I couldn't do this without, but I literally, really couldn't do without. Phil handles all this stuff. He's like, hey, one of the t-shirts ready. I'm like, oh yeah. So we're going to get t-shirts done soon with the logo. And my True Fire Classroom is going to be launched soon. And that is, um, it's a channel. And it would be like, I'm not sure what I'm going to charge, you know, between either 15 bucks a month, 10 bucks a month, something like that. And it'll be a lot of this kind of stuff, but it'll be a lot more with tabs and notation, just kind of in more depth. And the way I want to look at that is sort of, if you like this sort of Patreon way of looking at things, how you can help me support, help support me and my family doing this, and I can keep on doing this, and then you get more too. So you're, you're, you're helping out, but you're actually getting something in return a lot of lessons on there, and I'm going to go deeper into uh, some stuff, um, like taking some of the course ideas that I have and, and expanding upon those. So I'm filling up the classroom or that channel with a lot of stuff that I really like. It's going to be a little more rock-leaning than um, a lot of the blues stuff because I've got plenty of blues material at True Fire. So there is a blues section for sure, but there's definitely going to be some more rock. Cause I'm kinda, one thing that I've loved through doing this, and thanks to you guys, is, is digging out the rock stuff and, and starting to kind of play a bit more of that again, which has always been a big part of my life. Um, okay. Um, you do prefer the live streams, and uh, I do have an awesome interaction with people. Well, thank you very much. Um, a few audio issues. You know, I, the live is spontaneous, as Bro is saying here right now, and, and I, I feel that way as well. I, I, I really enjoy that because I just feel like it, you know, people ask questions and things just roll. And the funny thing is like, there's the pre-roll, which you don't see. Like, you know, for instance, Jason Lachlan is one of my really close friends and Angus Clark and all these guys. And we'll end up talking when I'm getting the audio ready. I think we're talking and I'm like, wait a minute, let's save all this stuff. And then sometimes we felt like we already discussed. So I was like, didn't we talk about that? I'm like, no, no, that was, that was in the pre-roll. That wasn't, that wasn't live. So anyway, okay. Um, I need to um, enable super chat. Yeah, thank you. Um, all those things. I, I'm, I'm trying to do, a, and, and this is where Phil has been spectacular. Oh, Jason Lachlan's doing a live stream on Phil Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time, and Phil is the moderator for Jason as well. Um, and, you know, uh, shout out Corey Congilio tomorrow. Good friend. 2 p.m. Eastern time, he's got his. So we're all trying to do this. Um, Okay, so I think that's it. Uh, I once again, I, I humbly thank you all for being here. And uh, look out for True Fire is doing DIY, I always want to say DIY, which is wrong, DIY summer. And I'm doing a series of videos on pedals and pedal chains and how you set them up. I'm going to post the videos here in this channel. I'm going to post them also over in, True Fire is also going to post them. Um, Things to look forward to, my launch of my True Fire channel, and Throwback, which is the pickup company I use on almost all my guitars, except for this one, um, and the old one, is going to be doing a giveaway for any set that you want. So you're not just going to be limited to a humbucker set. You can get a P90 set or a Tele set, and we're going to do a giveaway for when my, my classroom launches. Okay, cool. That's all the pitching I've got to do for today. Once again, I thank you, everybody. Any suggestions that people are going to have on? Uh, people I got to give a call to. Um, I know people ask for Andy Timmons. I know Andy. I got to give him buzz. Um, there's a great guitar player in New York. I got to call him. He's Australian. Uh, ben Eusen. And I got to give Ben a call. I've never actually spoken to him. We've texted. If you want to check out Ben Eusen, E-U-N-S-O-N, I'm sure. What a ridiculously good guitar player. So I want to get him on and uh, a bunch of other people. Any suggestions, let me know. And thanks so much, everybody. And I will see you a week from today. Don't forget, no Saturday. Hope everybody has a great 4th of July weekend. And please stay safe and wear your masks. Science, everyone. Science. Science. <laughs>